you know it's going to be a good show when you see cars in the car park that should be on display in the halls. And this year's Lancaster Insurance Classic Car Show at the NEC didn't disappoint. Once inside though, you are instantly reminded of the once mocked cars of yesteryear, now regarded as classic heritage. Also the classic marks of yesteryear. It's hard to remember that the, the Vanden Pla was originally a make of its own rather than just a badge attached to high-end rovers. It finished life making luxury versions of other British Leyland cars, but still had that distinct Vanden Pla feel to it. MG also had the same fate at one point, but did manage to produce some really good cars out of the standard British fare. A good example is this MG Montego. There were a number of Triumph Clubs in attendance, including the TR Drivers Club, who were showing a convertible TR7 alongside a couple of hard tops. Other clubs also showed racing TR7s alongside some more classic sporty versions of the Triumph cars. He once represented with three six-cylinder engine cars. All were in good condition and well maintained, including this rather old Series 1 version, which is represented alongside the newer Series 2. The SD1 successor, the Rover 800, was also represented at the show. It's a good example of the original shape and the newer shapes as well. While the dimensions of the car meant the interior wasn't as spacious as the previous SD1, it was still a really good environment to be driving in. For me though, this Thank stole you. the show. The Panther Solo. Quite a rare car these days. Only around 20 were made and some of those were destroyed in crash testing. So there's only around 8 around on the roads and quite a few of them aren't in this country anymore. The 2-litre Cosworth engine gave the car plenty of power, and it was compared to the Ferraris of the time, such as the F40. Sadly though, not many of these cars remain. Various MG clubs were at the show as well, representing the brand. Plenty of classics such as the MG Midget, and you were able to get up close and view them all. Rally cars were well represented, with rally history showing some classic rally cars, like this Saab 96. Complete with its V4 engine. And don't forget our favourite SD1. Right. 
6R4.net was showing a group of MG Metro 6R4 rally cars and you could get up close to them. You can see the V6 engine where the boot and the rear passengers should be and also the front differential where the engine usually lives in an MG Metro. Next to it is the more contemporary Metro style, the more traditional ones. In it we also had a Series 1 Metro van, which is quite rare these days, and right at the end, an MG Metro. especially towards the lower right where we can actually see some switches that look remarkably familiar from a particular Lamborghini. Other cars in the show included the Escort RS Turbo, something you don't see many of these days, and also a board escort Harrier. There's a vast number of makes and models from the very old and vintage to reasonably modern classics. Though some people might wonder why certain cars were actually there. Mazda MX-5s were there, alongside the Austin Princess. This wasn't the only classic British market that was there, there were a couple of Rover P5s and P6s as well. Including these with the V8 engines. Stunning cars in stunning condition. Also the long forgotten Humber. There were various cars there in states of repair and restoration, including this Maserati. If you don't particularly have the finances for this particular type of car, there were some other classics as well, showing you tips and methods of actually bringing these cars up to factory condition, or as close to factory condition as you can. Also, there was the old one or two that were literally on a trailer, which you could literally pick up on the day. All in all, a really good show. <laughs> 